So this question would be、um, you as a programmer, you as a programmer, right? So、um, as you keep developing in the, for a long time,、um, you will feel like、um, you are not growing as fast as you were before.、Um, what the successful factors or keys to keep growing and what you are、um, trying, what you are doing with for that? That's a great question. Something I've thought a lot about, not just in programming, but in a lot of other domains, whether it's race car driving or photography or whatever. In many ways, I envy beginners because what it's so fun to make these huge steps forward in your technique and in your skill on a regular basis. That is just invigorating, and it's one of my favorite things. It's why it's it's great to continue to learn new things because that feeling of Be a total beginner, don't know anything, and then making those steps forward is intoxicating. I think it's、mm. the easiest way to get access to this state of flow where you forget time and space and and whatever. So it's harder when you get better, but by no means is it impossible. I learn something about programming almost every single time I sit down and program. Part of the challenge is to make sure that you treat every opportunity. As a as an exercise, as in、mm-hmm. as a learning, not just doing something because you know how to do it and just let's do that again. Try something different. I, I wonder if this could be different. Not because it has to, not because the program necessary is going to be better, but just for your own satisfaction and enjoyment. I spend an enormous amount of time whenever I write a piece of code. I get it to work. I get it to pass the tests. I get it to go fast enough. Then I go back and think about all the ways I could write it differently, write it、mm. better, write it clearer, come up with better names. One of my favorite programming tools is the dictionary and the thesaurus. Looking up different names, finding different things in the, the, the main model. So that's really important. Is you approach your own work, even now that you're good enough that you can make anything happen, as though it's still a learning opportunity. Experiment,、mm. try different things, even though you don't have to. Um, you do it simply for the for the pleasure of learning from your own work. Then the other part of it is exposing yourself to different ways of doing things. This is why I love code reviews. I love、mm. doing code reviews in. We mainly use GitHub to do it because I get to see how someone else thinks, and sometimes、um, even a total beginner will think very differently than me, and I will learn something, even though I'm supposedly there to. Overview their code and be a mentor for them. It just works the other way as well. If you look for it, I think the number one danger of becoming really good at something is to develop an ego that tells you that you don't have anything left to learn,、mm. that you're already good enough, you're already better than everyone else.、Um, that is absolutely toxic to your continued learning and, in my opinion, satisfaction of doing this craft.、Um, so. You just have to accept that once you reach certain levels, like it slows down. You're not going to be advancing as quickly as you were when you were just learning, and that's okay. That that's the that's the price you pay from becoming really good at something is that the incremental improvements they come slower, but they they will continue to come. If I look back at the programmer I was five years ago or ten years ago, I'm a much better programmer today than I was then、um, because I've continued doing the. Doing that work, treating the work itself as a learning opportunity, trying to constantly check the ego of like, you know what? So what if I've been programming Ruby for 20 years? I have、mm. new stuff to learn. There are new techniques.、Mm. There are different ways we can do things.、Um, this is also one of the reasons I seek out all sorts of other technology, even though I don't necessarily use it at work.、Um, I, I enjoy just spending time learning. Whatever Kubernetes or Docker or, or Elasticsearch or other storage engines or setups, even though I'm like, you know what, it's not going to be the thing I work on、mm-hmm. most of the time. But、um, getting those impulses and influences from other domains and other pieces of technology is really important, such that you generate new ideas. You might see something that was done in a different language or different technology, and you go like, huh. Actually, I wonder if we could do that here too. We could put our own twist on it.、Um, and then the other thing, at least for me, is I learned the most when I 
kind of start something new. So we just mm. did pay.com, our new email service, spent about two years developing it. And like, we've already extracted tons of code into Rails. I'm not even halfway done. It's where much of the development for Hotwire came from. There's just so much work in it. So giving yourself new challenges and putting yourself in front of new challenges, uh, that's a, a key part of making sure you're you're still staying interested. If you just keep doing the same thing in the same way, day in and day out, yeah, you're gonna stagnate, you're gonna hit a plateau and it's not gonna be as fun. And um, no, you, you gotta check it out. Right, I, I'm curious about how much time are you spending um, your time to find the new stuff out of the work? Like in, in general, how much time are you spending with? It really depends on the phase I'm in. Um, so, for example, when we started working on Hey, I had to spend my time learning a lot of things that I didn't actually know that well in detail. One of the things mm -hmm. was how we were going to process huge amount of inbound mail. Um, mm -hmm. In Basecamp, we send 5 million emails per day, but it's all outbound, it's all transactional, it's all mm -hmm. just action mailers and things out. Receiving email, parsing email, Dealing with email on the way in is much more difficult. So I had a lot of work I had to experiment with that. And there was a thrill. It was a thrill to, even though I'm not a beginner in programming at large, I was a beginner at that. And that's the thing that you can continue to, to get those accelerating moments where you feel like you're learning a lot, um, is to seek out an area of programming where, do you know what? Like, I'm not an expert here. Front-end programming is a great example too. I mean, I've done JavaScript programming for whatever, 25 years mm -hmm. to some extent, but I've had these phases where I haven't really focused on it. And then when we started working on Hotwire and Stimulus and, and Turbo and so on, I really got into JavaScript development again. And I was a beginner in some of it. Um, mm -hmm. Not a beginner as a programmer, but a beginner in this domain. And it was great. It was great to get this feeling of like, I don't know all the answers. I have to figure out new ways of finding those answers. And in my pursuit of those new answers, given the background that I have, very often I would come up with different answers than what the rest of the industry or, or other people were coming up with. So um, putting yourself in front of those new challenges, I think is the easiest way to learn something new. Now, it's always a bit of a, a double-edged sword because what also happens sometimes is that programmers correctly realize what I've just told, that it's really fun to play with new things. And then they want to play with all the new things all the time. So whatever oh, new application they start, they want to use the bleeding edge framework, the bleeding edge <laughs> uh, uh, language, the bleeding edge database, and they want to do all of it at once. I think that's a bad idea. <laughs> Because you're going to end up being a beginner at everything. That's not a good way to go. For, for Hey, for example, we use total stock vanilla Rails. We didn't well, try to introduce a new, yeah. we continue to just use MySQL with active mm -hmm. record as we've done for 20 years. Because that was not an area that was important for us to quote unquote innovate in. That database works. Active record is an incredible framework that has two decades worth of improvement in it. That's not what we need to invent anything new. Inbound email processing. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Actually, we do need to invent something new there. That's how we came up with Action Mailbox, which then got put into Rails. Um, so you have to pick and choose. You can't say, I'm going to do everything from scratch. I'm going to do everything new all the time. Pick like one or two things mm -hmm. and then base that on the fact that, you know what? I'm going to take those two new ideas. They're speculative. Uh, it might not work. I perhaps should think about having a backup plan if one of them doesn't work. And then I'm going to have a solid core where I'm using things I just know that are not full of um, unknowns, right? Like I can just like, do you know what? I've, I've much of the Rails code in Hay is the same Rails code I've written for two decades. There's not like a lot of deep innovation in it because it didn't need that. And that meant I could focus my attention on like, for example, the front end with the hot wire or the inbound mail processing with Action Mailbox, like focus on a couple of things and then have the stability of everything else. So that's why you introduced Hotwire to the head as well, but not just the entire framework with the still Rails and they keep using the default choices, but only introduce a few new things to... Yes. To, to, yeah, right. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So、um, I'd like to say a big thanks to the David for taking the time to share your、um, knowledge and insight. ご視聴ありがとうございました。よければチャンネル登録、グッドボタンお願いします。